It's been about two weeks since we released the queens, and it's time to check brood development again. Last week we found that new wax cells had been built and were filled with eggs, young larvae, and sugar syrup. Well this week we find many more eggs and larvae and something else, capped brood. As the larvae matured, the bees that we installed capped the larvae cells with a wax seal. In a two-week period, the larvae then gradually transform into adults, similar to a caterpillar in a cocoon. Young bees will emerge from these cells in about another week. The sealed brood looks like brown cardboard. The sealed syrup is easily distinguished from the brood. Eventually, the syrup will get used and will be replaced with nectar, which will become honey. This colony has a good queen. By that, I am referring to her meticulous pattern of filling most every cell with an egg, rarely skipping one. The queen of this colony, however, was not nearly as meticulous, as can be seen by the irregular brood pattern. We build our supers following a square box design for our convenience, but the bees build their nest in a spherical design. At the center is sealed brood. It's sealed because this is where the queen began laying eggs first. She then radiates outward as she continues to lay. Therefore, the brood is progressively younger as you move outward. The cycle will begin again as the brood in the middle begins to emerge. The queen will then begin laying eggs in the center again. Above and to the sides of the brood is a thin layer of pollen. This is the protein that fuels brood production. The larvae are fed this pollen. Nurse bees also eat the pollen, which stimulates them to secrete brood food, which they generously feed each larva. The frames are then filled out with honey or sugar syrup. Some of it will be capped, and some will not. This is because bees evaporate excess moisture from the liquid. This is done by fanning the cells with their wings. When the moisture content is reduced to 18%, they will cap the cells. These serve as the carbohydrate, or energy stores, for the colony. Today we'll go back into the hives to observe their development. Three weeks ago today we released the queen, and since it takes 21 days for a bee to develop from an egg to a young adult, we may have some bees emerging from their cells. That is, assuming that our queen started laying eggs on her first day. But apparently she did, as there are bees emerging on this frame. So in this case, bees emerged after 21 days, almost to the hour. Remember that during the producing season, the lifespan of these honeybees is only six weeks, maybe as little as three weeks. An emerging bee chews through her capping and climbs out without any help from other bees. They are light colored and their hairs are matted together. For a few hours, her exoskeleton, or cuticle, is very soft. So soft, in fact, that she cannot sting. As a bee ages, it performs a series of tasks in a predictable sequence. On average, the first task is capping cells of brood. Next, the bees clean cells. Then tend to the brood, tend to the queen, receive incoming nectar, clean out hive debris, take their first orientation flight, build comb, receive incoming pollen, ventilate the hive with their wings, guard the entrance, and finally, begin foraging for nectar and pollen. Foraging is the most dangerous job because bees expose themselves to predators, pesticides, and bad weather. At this stage, bees literally work themselves to death, and you will find the ground in front of your hives littered with their dead, worn-out bodies.